Hi guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at Born-Haber cycles. So Born-Haber cycles are used in order to look at reaction energies, um, particularly with regards to lattice enthalpies. So there is no other way of calculating it other than Born-Haber cycles. And another thing to keep in mind is that Born-Haber cycles are very much like Hess cycles in the way that they work. However, they are applied for this specific scenario. So the first thing in order to understand Born-Haber cycles a bit better, we have to understand what the lattice enthalpy of dissociation is. So this is defined as the enthalpy change, enthalpy change needed to convert one mole of a crystal or an ionic substance into its scattered gaseous ions. So if we take a look at this map on the left over here, we can see that at the bottom there is NaCl which is solid. So you have NaCl, um, important to say it's solid, and then we're trying to get it to become Na plus plus in gas form plus Cl minus gas. So the Na plus and Cl minus represent the ions, whereas the gas form represents the scattered gaseous part. So we're taking this solid substance, which we know has a fixed lattice, lattice shape, and we're converting it into these scattered ions. And this requires knowledge of Born-Haber cycles. So there are many different processes that go into this conversion. For example, um, the first one you, can, you might be able to think of is it needs to dissociate into Na um, and Cl. The next part is they need to be ionized and electron affinity um, needs to be applied. So you get Na plus and Cl minus. They need to also be converted into gas form. Gas form. So all these things need to take place in order for this process to happen. And that's how we consider Born-Haber cycles. This basically makes it a visual representation of all these necessary changes. So there's a very good acronym at remembering this. So it's called FAIL. So credit to the chem department for coming up with this one. Um, so FAIL works in a way where you first have F, which is formation. So the enthalpy of formation of this product. A is atomization. So atomization is basically um, converting it into a single atom. So for example, um, if you have Cl2, that becomes Cl, etc. It just becomes one atom. And it also is a way of making it into gas form. Then I is ionization energy slash electron affinity. So this is necessary when we're considering how we need to get from Na to Na plus or Cl to Cl minus in this case. Because you need to add electrons or remove them, that requires ionization energy or electron affinity. And last is for L, lattice energy. So that's basically um, splitting apart the solid structure into its constituent ions. And now the, another thing we have to consider is how um, the, is the direction of these arrows when we're drawing the uh, when we're drawing the diagram. So F formation is to the right, A is down, I is to the right, L is down. That's how I remember it. Right down, right down. So when we draw it, we have our starting elements. So we have Na. Um, we have Na plus. No, sorry, we have Na. Um, solid plus Cl2 gas, which makes, um, sorry, half Cl2, which makes NaCl solid. That's the F part. Then the atomization, if we go down, it makes it Na plus Cl. So Na gas plus Cl gas, that's the atomization, that's going down. Then I is ionization energy slash electron affinity. So that makes this Na plus plus Cl minus, and these are both in the gas form. That's ultimately what we want to get. And last, we have lattice energy, which is what we're finding out. 
So by using F, A, and I, we can get L. So if you draw it something like this, where you start off with its individual products with their respective ratios, making one mole of the so solid substance, draw it down, you get the form in gaseous, uh, you get the gaseous ion form, uh, you get the gaseous atoms, and then you ionize it to make sure it's at gaseous ions as per our definition. So let's look at a couple of, let's look at an example just to apply this with some actual values. All right, so we're going to do this one example. So we have to calculate the enthalpy of formation of calcium bromide, where uh, delta H lat of CaBr2 is equal to 2125 kJ per mole. So CaBr2 is calcium bromide, and when we break it up into its constituent parts, we have calcium, which is a solid, plus bromine, which is diatomic, so it has to be Br2, and this is a gas. And when we think of the first letter of FAIL, which is our acronym for this, it's F, and that's a sideways arrow. So that'll be H, F, and that gives us CaBr2, and CaBr2 in this case is solid. And now we have to identify the other two parts to our Haber cycle. It's like a square, more or less. So this is the A, and that's the atomization. So we can say that's H at. H atomization makes these both get, get gaseous atoms. So we get Ca uh, G. And then Br2 is a molecule. We have to make an atom. So therefore, we can write this as 2Br. And this is still in as a gas. This letter over here will be our ionization energy, so we get, uh, sorry, we get delta H I E and delta H um, E A. E A is electron affinity, while I E is ionization energy, which gives us C A 2 plus, that's a 2 plus ion, which is still gaseous, gaseous, sorry, plus 2 B R minus and these are also gaseous. And then our final one is our lattice enthalpy, which is H lat. So now we've constructed our um, born haber cycle, we can actually find what we're looking for. In this case, they want the enthalpy of formation, which we know is HF. And they've given us all the other things we need with this table and which, with H lat. So let's start off with the H atomization. So you go from CaS to CaG. And if we look at this table, we can say the enthalpy of atomization is plus 193. So we're going to write this as H at is equal to 193. And then we also have to do this for Br. But considering there are two Br atoms that we have to make, we're going to multiply by 2. So Br is 112. So it's going to be plus 2 times 112. And if we put this into our calculator, we get 193 plus 2 times 112, which gives us 417. So delta H at is equal to 417 kJ per mole. Now let's move on to, um, so we know that delta H lat is equal to 2125 kJ per mole. Now we need to do our last part, which is delta H IE and delta H affinity. So let's start with IE. So ionization energy is basically the removal of electrons, and that's used for forming cations. So Ca to Ca2 plus um, is the formation of cation. So we have to use ionization energy there. However, it's important to notice that we have a 2 plus ion. That does not mean, however, that we multiply the first ionization energy by 2. We actually have to add the first ionization energy with the second ionization of energy of calcium because they're not the same. So that's a common misconception that people might make, so it's important to be careful about that. So the first ionization energy of calcium, let's move above, we see the first ionization energy is 590, and the second is 1159. So 590 plus 1159 is our ionization energy and if we just add those up we get 1749 and now let's consider HEA the electron affinity this is obviously for forming anions because you're adding electrons in this case you have two bromine ions that are being formed so 
we ha in this case, instead of adding the first and second ionization of energy of bromine, since it's only going to the first ionize first electron affinity, sorry, electron affinity, since it's only going to the first electron affinity, but there are two of them, we have to multiply the first electron affinity of bromine by two. So this is slightly different from the calcium one, which is just one atom going to uh, losing two electrons. In this case, two atoms losing one electron, which is actually quite different. So bromine, the first electron affinity, is negative 342. So this becomes negative 342. This is equal to negative 684. Let me just write Kj per mole. Oops, Kj per mole. And now comes the part where we have to add or subtract them depending on the direction. So we want to find delta Hf. So the first way to go is just go straight forward. But since we can't do that, we need to go around which means we need, to, in order to go around, we have to identify the appropriate cycle. So delta HF is you go down um, enthalpy of atomization um, plus the enthalpy of IE plus the enthalpy of EA because you're going across. And then we have to go against the lattice enthalpy because that, one, that arrow is going down. We need to go up. So this is subtracting it from H lat. And if we substitute our values in, so H at is 4, 1, 7, plus H I E, which is 1, 7, 4, 9, plus H E A, which is negative 6, 8, 4, minus the H lattice, which is 2, 1, 2, 5. And let's just substitute this into our calculator. So 4, 1, 7, plus 1, 7, 4, 9, minus 6, 8, 4, minus 2, 1, 2, 5. And that gives us negative 643 kJ per mole. So as I've shown here, although its, inten its intention is to calculate the lattice enthalpy, we can also use it to find a various, various different things like the enthalpy of formation. You could also use it to find the at enthalpy of atomization or the ionization or electron affinity values. And you do the same process. Another way you could do it is you could, um, even if you were finding the enthalpy of atomization, you could write out the equation like this and then rearrange for the enthalpy of atomization. Same thing goes for this and this. It's just important to define what you're looking for and construct the cycle as follows. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful and don't forget to use fail. And that way you won't fail on your exam when you're doing these questions. Pun intended, but not very well done. Anyway, I uh, hope this helps.